Is this video going to do well? No, I wouldn't have thought so, but when a game manages to squeeze through the cesspool that is Steam Early Access, I feel it deserves to be talked about and hopefully I can put this game on people's radar. In this video we're going to be looking at Northgard. Now I've recently been having a bit of a Vikings binge, which is probably why I came across this game, but not only that, this game is doing really well. It's managed to hold its own on Steam during the release of For Honor and managed to stay in the top sellers of Steam during that period. Is this Early Access's new hidden gem? So what is Northgard? Well, it's a strategy game that's centred around Norse mythology, taking inspiration from Age of Empires and Civilization. You choose from one of three clans which each have their own passive bonuses that will help you to achieve whatever win condition you decide to strive for. Winning by controlling a certain section of a map, annihilating your opposing factions or going the diplomatic approach and looking to the gods to achieve your victory. Even in its early access stage, with the lack of content being the only negative point here due to its early access business model, it's one of the few early access games that actually doesn't run like complete dog shit. Offering up a good amount of options, unfortunately the game will only run in your native resolution as there isn't an option to pick from a different one in the options menu. Well, if there is, I couldn't find it. Now, I run games natively anyway, but this could be a problem for those with inferior machines. Other than that, you've got your basic graphics options and audio sliders. Having a master audio slider would be nice, but I'll take what I can get. So, on to the gameplay. In its current state, there isn't much of a tutorial, but unlike other strategy games, this is really simple to pick up and play. Perhaps too simple. For example, you have to recruit a scout to go out and find new lands to take over, and these are split into zones, much like Civilization. But after you've recruited a scout, it will just go off and do its own thing. You rarely have to go back to the scout and tell it what to do. It will just find new lands automatically. Now, with that in mind, a lot of this game does things automatically, apart from one thing, which is really frustrating. When you construct a new building, you have to manually tell one of your settlers to go and build it. Now, this is really weird because when you only have about five settlers, they will automatically go and start building when you place a structure. But as you get more and more, they won't automatically go and start building, which is just really kind of annoying, but it's kind of nitpicky, I know. But with the way the zones are set out in this game, there is a certain set of resources that are unique to various zones. So if you want to go the complete diplomatic route, I find as though you're going to struggle a lot because, for example, if a certain zone has a really good food resource in it, you're not going to let your opposing faction just take it. You kind of want to have it for yourself, so that kind of forces you to have that military aspect of your settlement so you can go and raid, which is pretty much what Vikings are all about, right? I think each faction is going to start raiding each other's various territory so it doesn't really matter what kind of win condition you choose as long as you are taking zones and you are building resources and you are preparing for the winter because in the winter you have a higher food consumption so that really forces you to strive to get to those extra zones. So what I'm really trying to say is yes the win conditions do matter as in you will strive to want to achieve that goal but the way each faction plays out is relatively the same as in every faction will want to start taking zones and conquering new lands to get the various resources for your settlement and you can only place a certain number of buildings in each of these zones so you do really have to think about what's going to be the most beneficial for your settlement by looking at what building you place in what zone. Some zones offer more efficient woodcutting or hunting, stuff like that. And when it comes to the combat, all you have to do is select your warriors, right click an uncharted zone, and they'll just attack everything in that zone. Now, is this a good thing? Well, it's super simple. I'm used to managing units separately, giving them attack move orders, telling them which unit to attack. But in this case, you just simply tell them to go here and they'll kill everything in their path, which is, to be fair, very Viking-like. At the moment, in its current state, if you choose the path of controlling a zone by force as your win condition, it appears to be very easy as the AI doesn't even bother to challenge you whatsoever, so 
it's just really easy to do that. And it's actually really easy to kill the world mobs in that zone to hold it, but when multiplayer gets introduced, I could see this being not an issue, as other players will probably want to challenge that victory point to stop you from winning. Now, the art style reminds me of Warcraft 3, honestly. It's not the prettiest game, but it really doesn't need to be. The art style is really charming, but other than that, I can't really think of what else to talk about regarding the game. You gather resources, create a cute and charming little viking village, go and conquer new lands and try and win. My first game took me just under two hours to finish, so it'll certainly keep you engaged if this is your sort of game. On another note, I want to commend Shiro Games, the developers, for having a realistic plan when it comes to early access. It seems that they don't want Northgar to end up in early access limbo, and have already started releasing almost daily patches, and plan to have this game finished in two to six months with the promised features of multiplayer, a single player campaign and new clans, and also an array of gameplay additions. But like I said, there isn't too much to talk about as there isn't really much content. But it's certainly refreshing to see an early access game being released that not only appeals to me, but isn't complete shit. So, if you're itching for a promising strategy game title, I would hold off buying Northgard, honestly. But, picking it up when multiplayer is introduced. And then we'll see how in-depth we can get with this game as players react to what you're trying to accomplish because as I said earlier the AI just seems to let you do what you want and it's quite hard to lose. Until then I'm going to be keeping a very keen eye on the development of this game and I know I don't normally cover these types of games but hell I like the game and it intrigued me so I wanted to spread the word and if it helps a small indie studio then we're all winners. So with that said for those RTS fans out there do you think you'll be looking at Northgard and do you think you're gonna pick it up? Also, what's your favourite RTS game? I really need to start playing this genre again, so any recommendations would be really appreciated. I tried to play Stronghold 3, and, oh god, it was just not good. As always, you can follow me on Twitter to stay up to date with my antics and what's coming up on the channel. Take care everyone, be good to one another, and I'll see you next time.